Hey guys, accomplished the impossible here today with a video y'all requested in the comments. Um, this is a video of going through the little rack I have with all the con equipment in it. So this is the repeater, the duplexers, and then just bits and pieces I have in here. I um, want to say thank you everybody for the last uh, video I uploaded about this little com shed. Um, Y'all's comments was great, so I saw plenty of comments about the insulation, so that is a consideration in the future. Um, however, interestingly enough, the hottest, the hottest it's gotten in here um, wasn't too hot. The hottest it's been was 91, and that was with all the windows closed. If I open the windows and don't have the mini split running, it averages about 87 in here is kind of where it, where it hangs out. So it's not ideal for equipment, but it is just interesting to see how this thing is built if it's actually doing what I designed it to do and it, it is apparently. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we'll go ahead and start from the top work our way down. First thing on top is my access point for just the Wi-Fi coming into the shed uh, or my fiber optic getting converted at here through my switch and then going into an access point providing Wi-Fi to the shed so I have Wi-Fi in here or if I'm working around the area I have Wi-Fi on my phone. Got a Vertivegeist PDU. We got a uh, one RU insert. I don't remember what these particular form factors are called, but these are little keystone inserts. And this is a single mode. This is a multi mode. So it's important to know when you're dealing with fiber optic. The fiber that was run in here was single mode, so you need to keep everything single mode to where you're going to send it to. It's just better practice. Okay, then we got the Motorola controller, the Quantar controller. This little computer controls the repeater down there, which we'll get into. I have my Raspberry Pi, which is a running Pi Star right now, and it is running through a node that talks to a group of friends out in some other states. It's a little link system we have set up, which is pretty neat. This is a, a little analog telephone adapter that's not currently being used. I just have it up here because I know where it is. This is one of those Unify analog telephone adapters. Um, this is a Linksys switch that I got for free and this particular one's an SR2024 and it's been doing well. It's got some, I had to replace the fans in it which ran me about five dollars per fan and two went out so two fans replaced on a ten dollar investment for a free unit. It's not too bad. And uh, I was happy to have it run one gig fiber. This is only a one gigabit switch, so it is what it is. It's not PoE or anything. It's just a, a, a dumb layer two switch, which I don't need anything fancy in here right now. Anyway, so um, I got Ethernet. Ethernet runs up. One of them runs to the access point, as I said earlier, and then the other one runs up and over and down to my computer into the side there. Um, the other thing that's going on up here is, let's see, got the ground bar, we got a SDR, so if I'm away, I can actually monitor RF in the area to see what's going on around here, how it's, who's talking on the radio, it's just a remote monitoring thing I can just kind of jump on and listen to see if anybody's talking, kind of, and it, it, it could also listen on the repeater to see if there's any traffic, so I don't jump in there too much, but sometimes I like to. Below that is uh, my Windows XP Dell laptop. This is my old laptop. I think I've, this is actually the same laptop that I used in my XTS 3000 programming video, and that's the programming cable for it. So um, I can just put the, turn the laptop on, plug radio in here, and then I can remote in on my remote desktop computer and control and program the radio here from my desktop. So that's pretty nice. Another PDU. And then this is the guts of everything y'all want to see. So this guy here, starting from this part, is the duplexer. So uh, a duplexer is exactly what it sounds like in the name. It is a it is a in and out system that combines two into one. So on this left side we have a sticker that shows transmitter, and then on this side we have a sticker that shows receiver. This particular duplexer is a 440 meg duplexer, it does in the 440 range. This particular one is going to 460s area for GMRS. So you can buy flat packs and use them on a, on a GMRS repeater just fine. The only issue is, is on a flat pack you have a lot of loss. So 
you will actually have much better performance off of a higher end duplexer than you would a flat pack Amazon duplexer. They're, the flat packs are perfectly fine for what people use them for. I'm not, I'm not shunning them at all. I just wanted something that was reliable that I knew would be fine in any scenario and so far this has ex exceeded my expectations. Um, this particular brand I believe is a Reslock. Um, there usually is a brand sticker somewhere on here. Oh, there we go. Yep, that's a Reslock. And this particular one is a Quebec-3220 Charlie. So if anybody's curious, the original calibration was 461275 to 466275. And these are relatively expensive. This one right here ran me about $600 and it was including tuning. So um, the tuning itself was pretty much worth its weight in gold. Okay, going down to the piece of the best part, I guess, is the Motorola Quantar. These Motorola Quantars have a great reputation for themselves. They have been serving and they have been serving and still are serving agencies all around the United States. Fire agencies, business agencies, amateur agencies, GMRS agent, uh, people like myself. Um, all of that, these things are tanks and they're really, really good units. I don't have anything bad to say about them. Um, starting from the right, we have two receivers. This is where Motorola really started doing their modular dual receiver implementation. Um, a lot of their systems before the Quantar were single receiver. These actually allow for me to insert another receiver and I can have a dual channel receive um, in this unit. And then I have my main controller, which is this guy, as it says control. And currently I got station on and then I have a V.24 modem light blinking because I do not have a router to tell this unit what to do. This unit is kind of what we call running headless. It's being run internally by its own controller and reference and it's not listening to it's not it's not being told what to do by a outside controller. Which is fine. I don't need that to happen. Um, if I was to link it, my port 1 and 2 is where I would link the ethernet cables to. And then my RSS port programs it via the Quantar RSS software. And then this is for an uh, exterior speaker. And then this is for a microphone. This little guy here is for an external reference. So if we had a GPS rack mount system that had a 10 megahertz reference, that's where that would go. And then that just helps tell this repeater to be on the same clock as the, as the, the GPS itself. In between here is the power supply. This supplies uh, converts 120 volts AC in to 24 volts DC, and it uses 24 volts, but it also produces power out the back to charge battery cluster if you want that option. Next to it, I have the exciter. So the exciter actually doesn't do the main transmission. It, start, it, it is exactly what it sounds like. It excites the amplifier. The amplifier defaultly is off. The exciter once it once the receiver gets a signal the exciter will throw about a 1 watt a 1 watt worth of power into the power amplifier amplifier and the amplifier will be will excite and trigger the amplifier to amplify in this case 50 watts so the exciter and the amplifier are two different things but you got to have them both for it to work properly and I mean, that's pretty much it with the Quantar. Like I said, they're really good units. And in my opinion, the best thing about these Quantars is the pre-selector on the front end. These little uh, screws are very, very simple, are very, very similar to what the receiver up here, the, the high pass uh, cavities on the duplexer do. The high pass cavities, as we discussed earlier, if I move these plungers, I can adjust it to adjust the frequency I want to pass through this system. Additionally, we have a second in line or first in line receiver built into the unit and this also helps to really, really narrow down to make sure it is only going to receive 462 or 467.625 um, and it's very, very good at making sure it only gets that frequency in and it doesn't get any other noise around from other stations. Extremely important to have on tower sites especially when you have a lot of other things going on. 
Um, the other biggest thing, if you're gonna be doing something like this configuration, it's good to have a solid piece of uh, equipment for a repeater. It's good to have a solid, correctly tuned, emphasis on correctly tuned duplexer. And it's almost equally important, if not the most important thing, to have um, good cables. These particular cables are RG400. And every cable, I went and actually swept the cables to see what its return loss was in dB. And I picked the best out of, I ordered eight on Amazon and I picked the best three because all cables can be different. So the best ones I had, this particular one on 462 was 33 dB. And the next one, or DBM, and then the next one, 467, was 32 DBM. Very important to know that. If you have a bad cable, you will instantly know a difference. And you will your, your stations running around talking on the radio will have a noticeable degradation in performance on RF. Um, it is just remarkable how much and how big it matters to... Uh, for these little cables to, to be perfect. So you want to invest in a very, very good RG400 legitimate cable. There's a lot of um, third party brands out there that are not true RG400. Um, you're gonna pay a good amount for them, but they are worth every penny and this is just another reason that I could prove that. It's just, I can't say enough how important good cables are. Um, so next in the rack is the UPS unit. This is a three kilowatt UPS, and down here is the first batteries in line down there. And the second one is a stackable battery unit that I kind of talked about on the last unit, on the last uh, video. This particular unit has eight 12 amp hour batteries running uh, in series to achieve 48 volts along with this guy which is also 48 volts and together we're totaling 48 volts again as the total system and we are have we have about um we got a lot of amp hours in there to keep everything calculated so to keep everything backed up um, it's important to have a really good battery backup system. This is all fresh, brand new batteries. The system's really good. It's been online for about six months now. The Quantar has been online for six months. And when I did a battery test, the this particular unit backed up about seven hours of battery backup just for the repeater and everything in this rack to stay operational. So that was perfect, perfect timing. Um, and then again, we got fiber optic um, in here. The the upload and download is one gig. So I think there may have been a comment asking about that last time in here, but that's the speed. So um, that's about it for this rack. There's not a whole lot going on aside from that. This is not like a fancy trunking site or anything. This is just what we would call a conventional site, um, which is just transmit receive on a single station. So uh, the controller itself, actually wires into a serial connector. This is a null modem serial cable. And then it wires in to the back, wires into the back right over there. And that allows me to log into the repeater from wherever through a VPN. And I can see what the repeater's doing, see if there's any alarms. I can disable it if I have some sporadic emissions uh, in, in emergencies. Or I can log into it and do an RSSI check, which is amazing to have. So if, you, if anybody is curious about seeing the software and how all that works, let me know in the comments. That's a fairly easy video to do. Um, but for now, I just wanted to keep this video as simple as I could. So hope you all appreciate that. Uh, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments. We'll talk to you later. ATI out.